The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, I am the vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit in becoming my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. The Christian life is, as we all well know, certainly a journey. You don't get baptized and flower into the fullness of yourself just because the water was poured on your head. We reflected, I think just yesterday, perhaps the day before, how courageous, kind of like the Energizer Bunny, you know, uh, St. Paul was. Perhaps this first reading, as they persevere and persist, now today, not so much in physical persecution, but the tensions, and dare I use the word persecution again, of those who resist, the Pharisees. No, 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 okay, well, they're going to be baptized, but they still have to identify with and live through the Mosaic law. (coughs) It sets up and creates some kind of a contradiction there, such that are we saved by the grace of God's blessed favor, Or are we saved because we can keep laws really good? The answer is obvious. I hope. In light of the gospel, you would have to say that Paul was well nourished as a branch on the vine. It doesn't take a whole lot of thought, but you have to look beneath the surface to see the real intimacy the real personal nature of how God, Christ, God, not just Jesus, but the supreme Godhead, all of God, is inextricably a part of all of us. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. When I think of a vine, I tend to think of the smallest part, the smaller part. And I think, well, why is Jesus the vine? Why isn't he the branch? And we're the vine growing off the branch. Tells you how much I know about grapes. I like wine, though. Jesus is the vine because the vine is the part of the plant that's that's rooted in the ground, and it's through the vine that the vine brings nourishment from the soil to the branch, such that... I'm a little bit aware of vines and branches. You know, the vine might be rooted, let's say, here, and its branches reach six or more feet. And at the end of a six-foot vine, there's branches and clusters of grapes, and they are abundant fruit. I am the vine. My father is the vine grower. Not hard to use your imagination, Think of the vine as an umbilical cord. Hmm, you get that, right? We all had one of those. 
and it gave us life. If such a part of the anatomy was, let's say, severed or pruned prematurely, we'd be in trouble. No more can a branch bear fruit apart from the vine, and all branches apart from the vine will wither and be thrown in the fire. But again, look at the um, ever-personal reality of the divine within us. Jesus is the vine, the Father is the vine grower. To carry the analogy, we are literally nourished by the DNA, if you will, the genetics of God. Let's make it simple. God is love. The vine of divine love of Jesus, grounded and rooted in the Father, flows through the Father, through the Son, who is the vine, and to we who are the branches. We share the divine life, literally attached to the umbilical cord of the supreme being whom we express as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Brings it right down there, doesn't it? Now the pruning, of course, <coughs> is the necessary reality that we all don't like to have to let go of things that we know are probably not all that good for us. Conversion is the obvious word. But I also know, for instance, a uh, fruit grower will prune the trees, and typically any, uh, in the case of a tree, a branch that's growing downward. You have a larger branch than you have, okay, let's say a vine or a twig or another smaller branch. Everything that grows is growing downward toward the ground typically gets pruned off. Even if there's fruit on it, you say, well, wow, what a waste. But the fruit farmer will do that so that the remaining fruit will be of greater value. It will become larger and, let me use the word, more luscious. Sometimes we have to let go of things that at one time were very important to us and gave us life. But if we're still acting at 60 or 65, in and with or through things that nourished and gave us happiness and peace or whatever at 20 or 25, probably time to do some pruning. It's a wonderful image. And yes, God's life in us is that personal, that we're literally on the blood and water from the side of Jesus, grown up through the vine, again, another reason why we have bread and wine. Our bodies need the nourishment, but our souls are nourished by, could we say, the wine of God, the Father who is the vine grower. Just consider the image. We remain in God when we persist in him. God never leaves us. We tend to get fearful or uncertain when we misbehave, or what we typically call, well, when I sin, or when I do something I really didn't want to do, but I did it anyways or something I should have done, but I didn't do, but I know I could have, or should have. And we tend to waver when our emotions are happy or good. We say, oh, well, God must really be happy with me now. And then when our emotions are, are not so happy or we're tired or depressed or, or feeling guilty, we say, oh well, oh, well, obviously it's not a good day with God today. The vine, Jesus, is always rooted in the Father. God is unchanging. Some days we're going to feel very close and intimate with the Lord, and other days, not so much. St. Teresa of Calcutta would, would be like that, for instance. She bore great fruit throughout her life. And what did we learn upon her death? For the last 40 years, she was in what we would typically understand as the dark night. She knew she loved God, she knew God loved her, but she felt no affect. There was no perceptible uh, affective or, or loving support, but she persisted, knowing that she was a branch on the vine that is Christ, and she was nourished by Jesus, even though she didn't have positive and warm feelings about it every day. Again, as we pray then, be aware you're a part of Christ, and Christ is a part of you. 
on good days or bad, when you're tired or strong, when the problems are big or small, the vine, the branch is rooted and connected to the vine, and the vine is Jesus, and the Father is the vine grower. Nourish us, Lord. Prune those things that hinder us, that we may bear more fruit and give glory to our Heavenly Father, who has gifted us with the glory and the resurrection of the Son.